I mean, oh, yeah, we did it. <laughs> What's going on guys, if you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code it resolves 10 yp for 10% off your entire purchase. Hello and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. As you can probably tell by my voice, uh, it's early in the morning, a little bit too early, uh, and my allergies are acting up, so I might, sound, I'm, I might sound a little bit rough today, but we're gonna power through for you guys because we got an awesome deck today. We've got Rakdos Anvil. This is a deck that I have seen uh, and played against quite a bit, uh, and I've only played once just to get the feel of the deck uh, from my initial, you know, kind of playthrough and, and run through of what this actually does. So we're going to talk through it really quick. We're going to run through some games. Hopefully we might get more than three, depending on how long these go. Generally, this is a good fighting deck, but uh, it is a very aggro centric deck. And so it's looking to deal quite a bit of damage very quickly. This version of the list was taken from MTG Arena Zone. But from my looking, at least, uh, a lot of these decks basically run the same tools because it is such a tight-knit deck. And so you don't have too much in terms of flex spots. Uh, however, this is all built around uh, Unicult Anvil, uh, which is a really interesting card. Two mana artifacts. Uh, when, it, uh, when one or more artifacts you control leave the battlefield during your turn, uh, you create a 1-1 colorless construct artifact creature token. Uh, this ability only triggers once each turn, and then you can tap it, sacrifice an artifact, and it deals one damage to an opponent, and you gain a life. And so what this does is uh, a couple of things. One, if you've got multiples out, you can actually trade up. Uh, and what I mean by that is, say you've got two of these out on the field, you use its ability, sacrifice one of your 1-1s, one you actually get two 1-1s one in response. Uh, not only that, you of course deal a damage and gain a life. And so there's a little bit of a like trading up mentality to this deck if you can get there. Um, hopefully we kind of win a little quicker than that, but that's certainly a possibility. One thing this also does is break uh, aggro stalls. So if we find ourselves, uh, as an example, I was in testing against a Thermo Alchemist Burn deck, uh, and that's about the best matchup because we just get to gain life off of the Anvil, as well as the Meat Hook Massacre for sure, but most importantly, we just get to continually cycle this away to gain a bunch of life, uh, and we can do this multiple times a turn if need be. Uh, and in uh, a sweeper position, we can utilize some of our artifacts just to gain a little bit of life to kind of, again, set ourselves up for the following turn. We've got plenty of options there. So with that being said, a lot of the deck is obviously focused on throwing artifacts onto the field. So we've got uh, Voldaren Epicure, uh, which creates a blood token, uh, deals one damage to the opponent, which is great. We've got the Experimental Synthesizer, which is obviously just an artifact in itself when it enters the battlefield or leaves. Exile the top card of your deck, you can play that card, uh, and then you can pay three, sacrifice it, create a little 2-2 two -two with Vigilance. Uh, we do have Blood Fountain here, so this creates a blood token for us, and then of course we can return uh, two target creature cards from our graveyard to your hand if you sacrifice a blood token. Speaking of blood tokens, we do have the Blood Tithe Harvester. This is removal on a stick, but more importantly, it gives us that artifact to really get the deck going. Uh, we've got uh, this little interesting card, so Sokinzan Smelter. Uh, again, I hope I'm saying these correctly, but this can repeatedly uh, create a 3-1 Haster every turn. And that Haster can get in for some damage. We can sacrifice it if we need to, uh, to then get more little 1-1s one that we can then recreate the 3-1 uh, the Haster again the following turn. Uh, and so there's a lot we can do with that. Uh, Sanguine Statuette creates a blood token. Uh, and then whenever you sacrifice a blood token, you can have it become a 3-3 Vampire with Haste until the end of the turn. This sets up a play where you play this, use the anvil, sack the blood token, and then uh, can kind of get in for a lot more. Uh, Deadly Dispute, of course, creates some treasure tokens and gives us a way to kind of get rid of and devalue some of the removal on the opponent's side. Uh, speaking of removal, like I said, we do have Meat Hook Massacre. We do have the Blood Tithe Harvester. We do have Voltaic Surge, which can deal up to four damage if we sacrifice an artifact. Uh, we do have the Blood Chief's Thirst as well as just the two of here. Uh, this is really to deal with mostly planeswalkers if we need to, but can obviously get some creatures off the field as we go. 
Warlock class is here to deal extra damage. That's really the important thing here. Obviously, a creature dies like a lot of the time because we're sacrificing them. <laughs> uh, and so this actually is going to be able to consistently deal some damage, I think, in this deck. I haven't really gotten to play with it. However, uh, I've seen it used quite a bit, and it is very, very good. Uh, as far as the lands go, nothing too special. We do have two man lands here as well as a Crucible of Defiance, and that's about it. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I'm, I'm interested to see how this goes because I do really like this deck. I've seen it played like a lot. I've got some learning to do on it, but I did want to feature it on the channel just because it is so popular right now. <laughs> uh, this version does have a full sideboard because it was built for traditional standard, but we're using it in best of one today. So without further ado, guys, let's jump right in. Let's see how it goes. Hopefully we can get some wins and have some fun today. All right, guys, what do we have? Uh, so we don't have black mana, which is a bit of a problem. However, this is a very good red focused hand. Uh, I think I might try this just because I don't particularly want to go down on resources, but we'll see. Obviously, we're uh, we're recording on April 1st, by the way. <laughs> uh, so you'll notice we got the googly eyes going on. Uh, I had no idea this was a thing, funny enough. Apparently, I've never recorded on April 1st before, so this is uh, hilarious to me. Okay, uh, that's super, super helpful. Uh, what do we want to do first? I think we just attack him. Uh, I'll do this, and I will go ahead and play the Smelter. Uh, we didn't have the mana to use it anyway, so I wasn't really worried about uh, playing it free combat. Um, curious to know what we're going to be up against here, though. I'm a little worried. Seeing these colors is always a bit scary, you know? Okay. Uh, so, let's do this. Uh, we will pay the one. And I'm just going to go ahead and sack this. We're just in this for max damage at this point. Uh, we do not have the anvil play, so got to be a little careful here. Okay. Um, let's see what they block. We have that Voltaic Surge we can use to, to kind of kill it here, so this is fine. I'm going to submit zero. This is obviously going to finish it off anyway, so I'm not worried about that. So it look, does look like Rogues is the build here, uh, which is a bit scary, um, thankfully we deal a lot more damage than they do, like a lot quicker. Uh, but I, we really obviously would love to have our engine going and we just don't at the moment. Uh, so the question is, do we Voltaic Surge this? Uh, I think not. Deadly Dispute's not bad. Um, I think we do this to, to open up that deadly dispute, or the, uh, excuse me, the Voltaic Surge play where we sack an artifact. Um, that's going to create a blood token. I guess we should have waited on this, but I did kind of want to get that going. Um, so we do shut ourselves off from the deadly dispute by doing this, but we obviously gain. Uh, yeah. We'll All right. Again, we're just in this for max damage, guys. So this seems like the play to me. Uh, they might have another, yeah, Soaring Thought Thief, which is part of why I wanted to hold back the Voltaic Surge because I fully expected they had that. It was pretty clear they were signaling. So uh, the good news, bad news here is that, I mean, they don't have that much going on at the moment um, and we're able to get quite a bit of damage in. That was a nice little freebie kill. Uh, and I mean, now they are staring down lethal next turn and it's what turn five and there we go. We got it. That was very, very efficient. Uh, not a hundred percent perfect. I think we could have not played, uh, the blood tithe harvester there, but overall, I think it actually worked out pretty well. So I'm happy with that guys. Let's jump into game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. This is an interesting hand. Um, Double meat hook isn't great, depending on what we're against, uh, but we do have the Warlock class plus that. I'm going to try it. Um, I'm not super sold on it, I'll be honest, but uh, we do have that Warlock class to kind of help us out here. We can level that up pretty quickly. Okay, well, this actually might work out pretty well for us then. We do need a black source, a second black source for the meat hook. Um, so that is something we're going to have to consider here, but we have that Voltaic Surge that can deal with whatever they play looks like rabbit battery they don't have another land that's helpful to know Ooh, i messed up definitely messed up uh 
So I think we passed. I should have played the den of the bugbear. That was just a mistake on my end. Um, so 100% not correct by doing that, but we'll see what they do here. I'm gonna go ahead and Voltaic Surge. I think just the rabbit battery. They can reconfigure that onto something and really set up a play where even if I burn a creature, they still get the rabbit battery back. And I'm not really interested in that, so I'd much rather go ahead and do this kind of thing. Uh, that's helpful. Okay, so with that in mind, I think we can be as mana efficient as possible. Let's go ahead and kill this. Uh, let's go ahead and do this, and let's go ahead and do this. We did really mess up with that Den of the Bugbear, but, uh, I think we'll be able to kind of squeak our way through. Uh, you know, I think it is Experimental Synthesizer. Um, <clears throat> this gives us more plays, which we really need. Uh, because we are kind of a, a handful of just removal and stuff. They did find their second land. Okay. Um, interesting. All right. So do we meat hook now uh, with the intention that we don't really want them to reconfigure onto that? We can meat hook plus synthesizer. So maybe we do the synthesizer first. Another meat hook. Okay, uh, honestly, not bad because we just get to do this now. <laughs> That's pretty good. So we'll go ahead and do that. We gain a life. This sets up a position where we're going to continuously hit them and we've got the removal to, you know, gain some life as well. So we're offsetting a lot of the damage that they're doing and they are not finding very much, which is good. Okay. Uh, so we do have the Uni Cult Anvil play available. Uh, which I like. Alternatively, we've got the Smelter, which can get in for some damage. I think I actually kind of like this better for the moment. Um, and if they decide they'd like to trade, that's great. Um, so we do get a play out of this. Wow, another Meat Hook Masker. Okay. I mean... Oh. Yeah, we did it! <laughs> that was... That was weird. Uh, alright, cool. We ranked up, guys. We did it. That was interesting. Um... We won. Let's go to game three. <laughs> All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Uh, kind of an interesting hand. The deadly disputes are obviously not super helpful, though we do have the warlock class and the meat hook. And for that reason, I think we can safely try it. Um, we'll see. We definitely need some threats here or like an anvil that we can use. Um, but this is a nice little curve into the warlock class. The Warlock class on its own, if you have this in your opening hand, is generally a safe keep just because you can go ahead and activate it right away, uh, as we're doing here, even if you don't draw a second, you know, spell of some kind. Uh, this is not very good, though. Um, I honestly think we just take the land, as sad as that is, uh, and hope for the best. That was a pretty bad one. That's good, though, we filtered the top of our deck because we certainly needed to. Looks like Sultai something. That'd be kind of cool. We're not, we usually don't see a lot of Sultai decks right now, so I'm kind of into that. And a Prosperous Innkeeper, wow, okay. Again, not something you see very often. So this is probably going to be a creature heavy deck. This Meat Hook Massacre is something we will definitely be considering, although I don't think we're going to want to do it right away, um, unless they sack and go ahead and play a second card. Uh, we might want to get the easy two for one, but obviously dependent upon what we draw, of course, as well. Uh, opponent looks like they're really thinking. Um, okay, cool. They're passing potentially. Uh, so far, so good though, guys. This deck has been doing pretty well. Um, I think we've been playing mostly clean. I think we could have definitely... Uh, there are probably some, some alternative plays we could have made in different spots, but I feel like we've been doing okay so far, and we definitely got two wins, so I'm not feeling bad about it. Interesting. Uh, that's not super good. We have drawn quite a few lands here. Uh, I think we just have to play this since we don't have a play this turn, really. I mean, we could have meat hooked and gotten the Prosperous Innkeeper off the field. I'm not particularly interested in doing that quite yet. I'd much rather be able to get at least a two for one. Um, and if they do attack in, we actually get to recoup that life when we kill it. So it's not that big of a deal. We can let this go for a turn, gain the life back, and then hopefully be in a better position. I mean, Hive is a threat long term, but like right now we need stuff that impacts the board 
like right now. <laughs> uh, and unfortunately, that's not one of them. Would love to get down to the level three on the Warlock class, but that's pretty far away at this point. There's the Asika's Chariot. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. I'd much rather be able to sweep the board now uh, and get rid of a nice little three for one here, which we certainly can do. Um, and if we draw, well, we'll see what we draw, but um, this is certainly a good option to have. Okay. Looks like they're going to ping us for one, which is fine by me. Opponent really considering options here, which I do appreciate them playing conservatively, but... Uh, obviously in recording it does mean we may uh, only get three games so we've done pretty well so far about playing quickly um but i do appreciate the the thought that goes behind every single play that's important so i'm with it um i love the googly eyes all right i love this fish man look how cute it is it's adorable interesting I mean, I think the play is pretty clear. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we just meat hook for two here. Uh, as much as I'd love to synthesizer, deadly dispute the synthesizer, um, that would make a lot of sense, but I don't think now's the time. I think we just have to deal with what's on the board and hope they can't activate that Asika's Chariot. At the very least, it does take off the token copies, so it might just be a 4-4 that we're dealing with versus, like, a lot of tokens. Yeah. Looks like they've just got a couple shambling gas, which is not that scary in my opinion. Um, okay. Huh. So let's do this. Let's do this. Let's see what we get here. Another meat hook. Man, I really kind of wish we had played in a different order then. Um, I'm just going to do this. Uh, so this does create our little 1-1, one, one, which is helpful. We get a treasure token. So we're going to lose the land and a meat hook, which is not super ideal, but it's okay. And now at least we've got something we can kind of move forward with here. <laughs> Okay, culling ritual. Yeah, sure. Um, so, in response, we sacrifice this. Just so they get a little bit less mana. Um, but we definitely lose quite a bit here. And they get a ton. So, let's see. Are they going to play like a Junji? Or they got something bigger? Uh, it could be a Tox roll. It could be a lot. If it's a Tox roll, I don't think we can beat it. Um... If it's a Junji, I'm not sure that we can beat it, to be honest. That's big. Uh, I mean, we do have Hive of the Eye Tyrant that can start attacking in, depending on what they play. We'll see. It's a Lolf. Okay. I mean, Lolf is good. I mean, it's very, very good. But is it good enough to beat us? I don't know. Probably, right? Probably so. But we'll see. <laughs> so they are going to get to crew in and get a copy. Yeah. So they're going to get a 2-1 in response. Uh, that does open up the Hive of the Eye Tyrant attacking just to exile a card, though. Um, worth noting, too, they are... I mean, they've got nothing in hand here. If they have a Deadly Dispute, certainly now's a pretty good time to fire it off. Um, just to kind of refill for the upcoming turn. Uh, obviously they can wait. They don't have to do it right away. But I'm just saying, like, before their next turn is probably a good idea to fire a Deadly Dispute off here. If they've got it. <laughs> okay. I don't love that. Um. So what can we do here? Uh, not a lot, weirdly. Do create a blood token here. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, maybe not. Maybe I do this and then deadly dispute. 
at instant speed just whenever it makes sense, but we're just clogging up the board a little bit at this point. Crucially, this doesn't really stave off any attack that they've got, um, which is not great, but... What we can do is double block the Asika's Chariot if we feel the need, and then Deadly Dispute using one of our blood tokens here. This is a card we kind of need to shut down. Uh, it's a little too good, so... Let's see if this actually works. They could very easily have something here, but again, we've got the Deadly Dispute to kind of help out with that. Okay. So at the very least, we get that off the field. Let's go ahead and uh, Deadly Dispute here. We technically should wait till the end of the turn, but this is okay. Wow. Okay, Meat Hook's not bad, although it does really buff up their Lolth. Um, do we want to sacrifice the Blood Token? I actually think we do. We really need to draw further into the deck here, so I'm okay with doing this now. <laughs> okay, another Meat Hook. Um... So we literally only have to do this for one. Uh, and that still leaves enough, if I'm not mistaken, so that we can attack in. So let's do that. This gets four counters on the lull. So that's going to bring it up to six. Uh, but then we actually get an attack in for three. Uh, yeah. Wait a second. Auto pick. I think I might have messed up, but that's fine. Okay, no, we didn't. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so now if they want to drop tokens, we're gonna have, or they're gonna have to kill their Loth. I mean, that just gets it in a precarious position, right? It's not perfect, but it's a semi solution. Um, we can deal with that with the follow up meat hook as well as that, so that works out okay. Okay, they're just going to draw a card. That's fine. This is an interesting game. I feel like we're playing it to the best of our ability. I don't feel like we're hardcore misplaying. I'm sure there's a better path. And you guys, as always, guys, I should mention, if you haven't, like, feel free to let me know in the comment section, like, a better way I could have done something or anything, because I'm all for trying to get better here. Um, worth noting, though, we're just here to have a good time. <laughs> That's all that that really amounts to, and so um, it's not necessarily about trying to be the best player in the world, but we do want to give it our best shot and uh, hopefully make some some fun content. Um, they can tap in zero, like or uh, like plus one, and then just submit zero. They don't have to. This can't really do anything to us, and if they reanimate something, we just get to kill it with the meat hook. So that's actually okay. In fact, I really hope they do that, because I'd rather kill Tamio, I think. <laughs> okay. There's a Blood Tithe Harvester. Uh, land is very important here, because we need to meat hook for one, plus leave up the Hive. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and do that. Doesn't matter which we keep, obviously. All right, um, and we do want to start exiling stuff from their graveyard. Probably these innkeepers. <clears throat> yes. Um, and I think we do have to attack the Loth here, sadly. Uh, this is going to be a problem, like 100%. But uh, yeah, let's get the innkeepers out. The life gain from the innkeepers is kind of relevant at some point here, and so... I mean, eventually we're trying to kill them with life, so let's go ahead and do the best we can to mitigate that. But again, we're just not giving them a target for Tamio. I mean, they can keep plussing, but they're not they're not tempoing us at that point. Um, the trick is obviously this can ultimate uh, at some point, and that's not good. <laughs> that's really, really bad. Um, so I'm curious to see what they do with it here. I mean, they're up to very close to ultimate range, so. Okay, they are going to put... Oh, wow. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, 
Um. So eventually they do run out of things here. Uh, we do attack this. We'll take this. Okay. Wow, they just let Loth go down. This isn't a blood on the snow deck, very crucially. Uh, they do not have snow lands, so that's not something I'm worried about uh, here, to be honest. They're also just hitting a lot of lands, which is fine by me. Um, hit all the lands you want. So now they do have a target. Interesting. Okay. So meat hook, meat hook versus meat hook uh, is pretty interesting here. Uh, they've got two more shambling gas if they'd like to keep reanimating just to help save Tamio. Um, but they are in a bit of a weird position where, like, yeah, so they're gonna. Oh, they can just bring back Lol. Duh. Okay. They trade Tamio for Lol. Interesting. Hmm. I think we have to do this uh, as much as I don't want to. Um, oh, that's so good. <laughs> All right, so we kill that. Um, and we don't quite have enough to activate an attack, so we just pass. Lol, uh, that uh, Blood Chief's Thirst was really good there. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, well, now I have to imagine they can kill us unless they just completely whiff on the storm. Wow, they did. <laughs> okay. I mean, they can play it again next turn, although actually no, because we get to just, uh, we have to do this. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that we literally have to exile the Storm the Festival here. Um, so we are going to go ahead and do that now just to keep that play out of there. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, what do we need? Probably Anvil, although it's a bit slow. Um, I think at this point we're, I mean, they've got much better top decks than we do. They just haven't, I mean, Storm the Festival was really good, but they did not get there with it. Um, so I'm feeling semi-okay. I do think we keep attacking in, um, because we're exiling stuff from the graveyard. I just don't want them to be able to bring stuff back. So I think we'll get the Tamiyo out. Yeah. Um, and here we get to drop Anvil plus Blood Tithe Harvester. Um, and we can actually go ahead and just do this as well. This is a killer game, man. This is a really killer game. Um, okay. Sure. I mean, that's a good card, but it's a little late in the game for that. Uh... Do we want to... Well, no, because it has Menace. I think we just win that race anyway, so that's kind of fine. Yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and do this, too. There's really not a big reason not to. Uh, we gain life in the process, so we're kind of mitigating some of the damage that they're giving to us. So I'm cool with that, and we're just going to attack with everything. <laughs> I'm going to get the Shambling Gas out. We know they have Tamiyo, so let's not worry about that. They are going to block with the Innkeeper. We caught them down to two. <laughs> and here's the thing. If they're at, like, if they have a Meat Hook Massacre, as an example, like, that's a really good card right now. But our two Meat Hook Massacres kind of cancel each other out for the most part. I guess they would gain some life more so than we would. Um, but we still have the Hive of the Eye Tyrant, and they have no man lands. We've also really attacked their graveyard, so this Tamiyo is much less powerful. What they can do is tap this down, which makes total sense. Um, oh, that's really good. Oh, man! What a game! Guys... That was incredible. We went undefeated with Anvil. That was amazing. Let's chat about this. All right, guys, what a tricky, tricky third game there. The first two, I think, super, super smooth. The play patterns were pretty obvious, in my opinion. Like, we we could have made some different decisions there, of course, but in general, I felt like we made the best call we could for the given situation, and it worked out. We got the two wins for that third game. 
Things were a little less uh, obvious, I think, at times, and we still managed to squeak out that win there. That was incredible. An undefeated run with Anvil, guys. That was pretty cool. Um, I love this deck, 100%. This is like an aggro deck that I really enjoy. I'm not generally an aggro player. I like control decks, mid-range decks, reanimator decks, like combo-y style stuff. Um, but aggro decks just in general are not my thing. Um, that being said, my goodness, did this not, I, this worked great. I absolutely love this. Uh, I, I, I really do uh, recommend trying this deck out. I think it's a very good deck. We've seen it a lot on the ladder, so we know that a lot of other people are playing it. We know it's a fairly prominent deck in the meta right now. Uh, and truthfully, I just thought that was amazing. So I love this. I certainly hope you guys enjoyed it. An undefeated run with the Anvil, guys. I loved it. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Leave a like, leave a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And guys, we'll see you again very soon for some more gameplay videos. Thank you so much. I'll see you later.